Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. We're in the middle of a series and we want you to go back and watch previous episodes of this series yeah. because we know it'll be a blessing to you. Like I said, we can't, we can't teach it all in every episode. So we got to tag on and I just don't want you to miss it. And so we've been teaching out of my book called The Price of the Double portion anointing. And I know this, uh, I, well, let me just say this. I don't want to mislead people into thinking that everyone's going to walk under double portion anointing, but we can all walk under um, greater skill with the anointing that yes. abides within. Yes. Every single believer has an anointing that abides within, and yes. we need to be skillful with that, uh, allowing that anointing to flow unhindered. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so what is taught in here will help uh, specifically ministers, but generally everyone will be blessed by it. Um, so we've been taking the time to teach on that. This comes out of something that happened uh, in 2018 when Jesus Jesus spoke to me while I was in St. Petersburg, Russia, and we taught what he said to me in the previous episode. So you have to go back and watch it to know what he said. Yes. Um, the night after he spoke to me, the very next morning, the Holy Ghost added on some additional things to emphasize. So that's what we're talking about right now of what the Spirit of God said the following morning after Jesus spoke to me. One of the things that the Spirit said to me was to walk in the double portion anointing calls for great wisdom. Yeah. Amen. And so um, that's what we've been talking about because when we talk about walking in wisdom, we're talking about walking in the wisdom of the word, yes. talking about that Christ has been made unto us wisdom. Uh -huh. um, who we are in Christ uh -huh. is the wisdom of God for the New Testament believer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We need to know who we are in Christ. That is the wisdom of God. Yes. And we need to also, the wisdom of God is rightly applying the word. Amen. 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 Not, just, not just knowing what the word says, but how to apply the word and the knowledge of that word rightly. Amen. 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 Nothing can take the place of the anointing. That's Excuse right. me. Let me st re restate that. Nothing can take the place of wisdom. wisdom. Right. Thank yes. God for the anointing that abides within, but that's it's right. no substitute for walking in wisdom. Yes. Thank God for the faith of God that's in our heart, but it's no substitute for walking in wisdom. Right. We need them all. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about, specifically where we left off on a previous episode, was talking about walking in great wisdom concerning our bodies. Yes. Yes. That when we're to walk in great wisdom, we're, we're to walk in wisdom spiritually uh -huh. it, regarding the spiritual arena, the mental arena, right. the physical arena. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so in talking about the physical arena, we're talking about being a good custodian of our body right. um, because Jesus is our healer, but we still have to we still have to walk in the light of the word regarding our bodies. Our yes. bodies are still mortal. Yes. Yes. And we can't violate diet, exercise rules, the laws that govern those, and then also proper regard for natural laws. Uh -huh. We cannot violate laws of nature and think it won't affect us. It, it will. And so our body is our greatest asset. We must take care of it. Our body is what gives us permission to keep residing on this earth, to carry out the plan of God. And two, we want to... We want to take care of our bodies so that, uh, so that it can facilitate us carrying out the plan. Right, right. Right? Yeah. Um, if we're not taking proper care of our bodies, it opens the door to the devil to yeah. attack us. Yeah. And he's always looking for an opportunity. Right. 
to attack us. And um, you say, well, Pastor Nancy, um, I haven't always taken proper care of my body. We'll repent. Believe God for him to heal Mm -hmm. and then implement right changes. Amen. Because that's what has to happen. Um, So we were talking about diet. We talked about exercise and we were talking about rest. That it's, it's important that we rest the body properly. Um, If the devil can't stop you from advancing with the plan of God, he'll try to get behind it and drive you. So that you are going night and day and not resting properly. And so we have to walk in wisdom in these things. Amen. Amen. Um, And we made this statement, rest and sleep are two different things. We need both. We need both. (laughs) Those those that have entered into faith, they've entered into a rest. You know, there's there are people that may get enough sleep, but they're not at rest. They're worried. Right. They're, they're in yes. turmoil uh-huh. and therefore their sleep is not even refreshing to them. Yes. Yes. Um, we know this, when I say rest and sleep are two different things, how do we know that? Because on, on creation, during the seven days of creation, the seventh day, God rested. Uh-huh. He's a spirit. Yeah. Yes. He rested. But yet in the book of Psalms, it tells us God neither slumbers nor sleeps. Yes. So he rested, but he doesn't sleep. He doesn't need to close his eyes and sleep, but there is a rest. And so we're to make sure that we're walking in wisdom regarding our body because it is mortal. Amen. Amen. Uh, Let's tag on to where we left off previously regarding this. Different people need different different amounts of rest. You know, so you have to know what you need and plan for that. Amen. 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 Because really not resting is just a bad habit. It's a bad habit. And the body can be so deprived that it doesn't even rest or sleep easily. Um, so we need to make sure that we're addressing any of that. I know for me, because of traveling and for, I have a full schedule. I love my schedule. I love that I get to do what I get to do. Um, but so that I can keep enjoying it, I'm not going to live tired. It's difficult living tired. And I don't want to not enjoy what I'm born for. And people will start blaming the ministry of why they wore out. The ministry never wore anybody out. It was their lack of rest that wore them out. The ministry never wore anyone out. It was lack of rest. Amen. Amen. And so we have to make sure we're walking in wisdom, walking in wisdom. Um, overwork never killed anyone, but lack of rest did. Amen. Um, I want to, I want to say a few things in connection with that is we know this, the Lord is the strength of our life. And as we use our faith, his strength will enable us to produce more than the average man, than the common man. Uh, But his strength is not meant as a substitute for properly resting the body. That's good. That's not what it's meant for. Uh, He will enable us to produce more, um, our time more effective, And um, we don't have to live based on our body. We can live based on the word by faith, but we do have to recognize we have a body that we're a custodian of and we have to be a good steward of. Amen. Amen. You think about it with any world-class athlete, it's not just how they perform on the field that wins the, that wins the, the medal or, you know, wins the top spot. Whenever they are, then whenever they're in their, their season, um, they have to train properly. They have to eat properly. They have to exercise properly, but they have to rest properly. All of those Uh factors are involved. And so proper rest is a much overlooked requirement Mm -hmm. of us running our race Mm -hmm. accurately and skillfully. It's difficult to yield to the spirit when we're tired. We will begin to miss things uh, spiritually if we're living overly tired. Because when we're tired, we're not as keen as we should be. And um, it can result in us missing or failing to recognize some of the things that the spirit may be leading us in, which can get us into trouble and ultimately end up affecting and hindering our spiritual life. Amen. Amen. Living tired can also result in us just making bad decisions. 
That's Amen. right. Yeah. People will make bad decisions when they're tired, yeah. uh, especially if we're not keen to how the Spirit is leading us right. and we're not consulting the Holy Ghost as we ought. Yeah. Uh, when, we, when we're overly tired, we become less watchful against the enemy. We're not as watchful yes. because we're too tired. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. <laughs> and thereby we can give place to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. God may move on you. Let's say this to wake up and pray in the middle of the night. If he moves on you to do that, uh-huh. you'll be refreshed because of it. Yes. Yes. But for you yes. to try to deprive your mm-hmm. body to show yourself faithful, mm-hmm. depriving yourself of rest is not faithfulness. Right. Right. Yeah. If, if it's proper rest that's needed. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Don't try to deprive yourself just to show yourself hungry yeah. or spiritual. Yeah. Right. Be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. And if the Amen. Spirit wakes you up, because I've had him do that, wake me up in the middle of the night and interrupt sleeping, that's fine because yeah. my whole 24 hours is his. Yeah. Yeah. In the right. sense, I'm available yeah. to him. Exactly. But I know this, I've still got to rest. And if he wakes me up, he knows how important rest is in the life of our mortal Uh body, you know, existing. So if he woke us up, it must be important. important. It must be important. And it will, we'll be refreshed by obeying him. Now I want to talk for a moment about rest and the anointing. Mm -hmm. Okay. As believers, we have an anointing, every believer has an anointing that abides within us, mm-hmm. every yes. single one of us. Yeah. Yes. That's for the success of our everyday life, right. mm-hmm. that we can turn inward and draw on that anointing, that power of God, mm-hmm. yield to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but those who stand in a five-fold ministry office, mm-hmm. either an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, mm-hmm. they have an anointing that comes upon, mm-hmm. yes. that enables them to minister to the people. This anointing that comes upon is not for their own personal life. It's for ministering to the people. So the anointing that abides within us, every believer will refresh us. If we'll draw on that anointing, we'll realize that we can produce in a fraction of the time. That if we were just counting on our own human natural ability, we will go further and we'll produce more when we draw on that anointing that abides within. And so when we draw on it, it ends up refreshing us because we produce more with 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 minimal effort. In that sense, but the anointing that comes upon can draw strength out of the body because you're ministering to the people. Now, for me, when that tangible healing anointing, for example, Mm -hmm. when I go to lay, if I'm in a service and I go to lay hands on the sick, it goes through me before it even touches them. Mm -hmm. So for, I'll touch sometimes hundreds in a service. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine grabbing hold of a live wire. (laughs) That's what that tangible power, it's like a current and it will draw the strength out of your body. Uh because you're ministering and, and, Mm -hmm. and, and spending Mm -hmm. that anointing for the benefit of others. And I feel it. And I'm talking about laying hands Mm -hmm. on the people. I will feel it every, they feel it themselves, but I feel it for everyone. And so when that anointing, after having operated under that for a while, my body needs rest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it depends on which office you stand in and how that anointing affects you. Mm-hmm. A tangible anointing, it can draw strength out of your body because it flows through you to, into them. Yeah. Um, I've seen other ministers who say that they are so energized yeah. by that anointing after they've ministered, uh-huh. but they didn't operate under a tangible anointing. Uh-huh. Right. So you have to understand mm-hmm. different ministers operate differently yeah. and the anointing may affect them differently, but that anointing that's tangible, it's weighty mm-hmm. yes. and y- your yes. body can feel the, the weightiness yes. of that yes. Yes. and it can drain the strength out of your body. Just like if you're carrying a heavy load all day, let's say you're, you're moving 
furniture. Maybe you're moving into the house. Boy, your body can feel it differently at the end of that day than any other day because of the weightiness of the things you're carrying. Same thing with the anointing. That, that anointing can be weighty when it's tangible. So I, I need to rest appropriately after I've ministered. Um, I love what one minister said. I, I was talking to him on the phone and they made, um, they made this statement. They said, it's the anointing that strengthens us and empowers us to teach, preach, and heal, lay hands on the sick. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking about ministers. It's the anointing that strengthens and empowers us to teach, preach, and heal. Don't make ministry decisions under that anointing because that's not what that anointing is for. The anointing is to empower us to teach, preach, and heal or minister to others. Don't mistake the strength of the anointing for physical energy. Because physical energy is only gained as the body has proper rest. Mm -hmm. Now that's true. That's true. Because the anointing will energize. In some flows of that anointing, you'll be energized. Sometimes after a meeting, um, I'll come in maybe back to my room, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, but it's four, five, six o'clock in the morning before I can go to sleep because that, that anointing energized me like I couldn't go to sleep, yet it, it drained strength of the body, but it also energized to where I couldn't sleep. You have to be aware of how to conduct yourself under that because if I could say this, to operate under a degree, uh, a power and that's a weightier anointing, your body has to be more fit. Our body must be fit to operate under degrees of power and under a weightier anointing. And I'm talking about the anointing that comes upon for ministers. So proper rest is even more important in those. So we must discipline ourselves to it. But um, some ministers will conduct many services a week so that anointing continues to stay on them. Mm-hmm. So they're living off of that anointing. Right. Right. Yeah. There's the danger. Mm-hmm. They're mistaking that strength of the anointing as physical energy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I, for me, I have to come out from under that anointing that's upon mm-hmm. yeah. enough so my body can rest yes. because as yes. long as it's upon me, yes. my body's not resting. Right. It's just, right. inner, it's strengthened by that anointing, uh-huh. yes. but my body hasn't rested. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. That's so Amen. Nice. Does that make sense yes. to you? Yes. Yes. So what will happen when a minister is trying to live off that anointing mm-hmm. that's upon, that's, that's a problem mm-hmm. because that's not physical strength necessarily. Right. Right. That's the anointing. Strengthening and empowering. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so they will feel strong. strong. Right. Right. And then they go to rest and they'll feel weak. Yeah, because the body needs to recover. Right. Yeah. Right. But they'll think that that weakness is a problem, so they'll start ministering and book themselves to uh-huh. minister again to get back under yes. the strength of the anointing because right. they right. think that's the energy for the body. Uh-huh. Very good. Mm-hmm. They're trying to live off the anointing. They don't realize it many times, mm-hmm. but that's not what the ministry anointing that comes upon is for. It's right. to minister to the people. Yes. Yes. It's yes. not a substitute for proper rest mm-hmm. yes. Amen. that the body needs. Uh-huh. And if those ministers don't learn to come out from under that anointing mm-hmm. long enough to rest mm-hmm. over time, their bodies will start breaking down. Oh, that's that's true. Right. They'll start having heart trouble. Right. Mm-hmm. They just won't have proper rest and the body can't recover because they're putting themselves to live under the strength of the anointing upon. Now, remember what I said, the anointing that abides within every believer, you don't need rest from. It refreshes you. It refreshes you. But that anointing that comes upon, you need to come out and I'm talking to ministers. You have to come out from under that to rest. Right, right, yes. So I would, I would, uh, in the past, I would take four for me personally, I would take four days altogether to rest. Mm-hmm. 
about every five to six weeks. But it would take the first two days for the anointing to lift off of me enough so I could rest. You understand that? So that's why it took four days, not because I I was resting the whole four days. For the first two days, I felt like I could still keep going, but I made myself stop so that my body, that anointing could lift off of me, the tangible anointing. And people say, I don't want the anointing off of me. Well, the tangible anointing that comes on you to minister, you have to come out from under so you can rest. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Get a lesson from the ministers of many generations gone by who died prematurely because they never rested. Because they felt the strength of that anointing so they thought they could keep keep going. Then Uh their bodies started breaking down because that was not physical energy. That was, and you say, well, why did God keep anointing them? Because they kept drawing and yielding. And what you keep drawing on keeps flowing. It's like, If you had gallons of water Mm -hmm. and you know, you can drink too much water and it starts working against you. You know, you've heard of some people have had serious problems because they drank too much water. It it depleted minerals and things out of their body. And you say, well, why, why did they keep drinking? Well, the thing is just because it's available doesn't mean you're to keep partaking of it. That's good. Amen. 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 That's right. And you can put yourself in a place to where you keep partaking of it beyond what your body, what's healthy for the body. Amen. I was talking to uh, a a seasoned minister who, him and I have had discussions about this. And one of the things he said, which I appreciated, I asked him after he had handled, he had been doing a, a, a conference. And I said, were you able to go aside and rest? Um, And he said, um, after a series of meetings, I have to leave. I go aside. I don't just stay in the same, uh, I don't stay around the ministry. He said, I I separate myself and go aside so that I can rest because if I don't step out of that flow on purpose, Mm -hmm. the stream keeps flowing. And I stay in the stream. I'm staying in that stream and the stream keeps flowing. So you have to learn when to step out of the stream. Amen. Amen. You're not stepping out of the plan of God. You're not stepping out of your office. But there is a flow when you're ministering to people. And you have to know to rest your body, you have to on purpose step out of that so your body can rest. And then go back and God will bless you. And your body will be able to, to, to keep, mm-hmm. if I could say this, being a, an appropriate carrier of that anointing. Right. Amen. So he was saying this, if he stayed around the ministry headquarters, uh-huh. if he stayed around where the church was, uh-huh. and he stayed in that stream, the needs of the people would keep drawing on him. Yes. And that anointing would keep flowing and he wouldn't stop. Yeah. So he had learned step away, Mm -hmm. step out of that stream because the stream is always flowing. You can always just step back in it. See, the stream is always flowing. Mm -hmm. So you can step back in it Mm -hmm. when you need to minister to people. And I believe that that's what we were reading in Mark chapter 6, 31. This is on a previous episode, uh, the Amplified Classic, uh, when Jesus sent out the disciples two by two Mm -hmm. to minister to the people. And after they came back, he said, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Get away from the people. Yes. Yes. Come aside yes. from the needs yes. of the people. Yes. Because if you stay around the needs of the people, it keeps drawing on the flow of that anointing yes. and you don't rest properly. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we have something to do with stepping in or stepping out of that flow. Yeah. Step in when it's time to minister, but step out when it's time to rest. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. Because the needs of the people will keep drawing on that anointing right. if you stay around, yes. you know, where people are. Um, so notice that scripture, Jesus said to the disciples, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. Yes. How long is a while? Till you're refreshed. Amen. 
until you've come out from under that anointing long enough for your body to rest. Mm -hmm. Evidently, it takes more than one day to fully rest. It, take, it can take a while, uh -huh. right. however right. long that is. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, so there must be balances in this as well. Like I said, um, we want to make sure we're bringing our supply, right. not be lazy, mm -hmm. doing our, our, our measure of work. Amen. 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 Have a strong worth ethic, work yes. ethic. Yes. Yes. And not use it, rest as an excuse to be, to be uh, unproductive. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. yeah. So people have to discipline themselves against laziness. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we can also have a habit of not stepping out to rest our bodies. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. 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 And I mean, this, this can happen uh, in a profession mm -hmm. that, whatever, a, a profession that's maybe more physical or a profession that maybe puts a greater demand on them mentally, they have to come aside to rest. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 Um, some people have a habit of complaining about work. I'm overworked. Mm -hmm. I have too much work. Mm -hmm. When it's really not overworked, that's tiring them. It's lack of rest. It's lack of rest. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. We have to make sure we're, uh, we're organized too yeah. because being improperly organized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will also um, cause us to have to work harder. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. True. yeah, yeah. So to walk in great wisdom mm -hmm. includes how we handle our body. Right. Amen. Well, Amen. we're teaching these things out of my book called The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. We invite you, go to our website at JesusTheHealer.org and you can purchase your copy there and we'll get it right out to you. But um, the reason we're able to come to you today is for one reason, Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland Ministries. He sows the airtime yes. to me and to every broadcaster on this channel. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's an amazing, generous gift. Yes. And if yes. this broadcast is a blessing to you and you're not already a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries, I ask you to pray about becoming a partner. You can go to kcm.org and you can sign up to be a partner there and it'll be a blessing to you. Amen. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Fresno, California at Elite Event Venue, located at 4105 West Fig Garden Drive, Fresno, California, 93722. The dates are March 25th through the 29th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. It belongs to us. We cannot live the life God authored for us without His power. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Every one of us have a job to do in the body of Christ. It's a new day of stepping into places in the Spirit that will bring us into a greater flow. They call for anything else but to help people. A fresh momentum that hits a stride. What is the job of the body of Christ? It's to set people free, get people healed, get people saved. Can you say amen? Hitting a stride in the spirit realm in healing and in gifts of healings. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne. 
president of Dufresne Ministries. I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. The vision of Dufresne Ministries is to move with the Word and the Spirit as we bring the message of faith and God's healing power to this generation. Partnership is a two-way street. We commit to bring the uncompromised Word of God to you, and you can, by faith, become a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Then our partners bring their prayer and support. If you receive from this ministry and have been blessed by it, please pray about becoming a partner today. God bless you. Some of the arms of the ministry that you'll support include a traveling ministry with crusades and conferences held nationwide and abroad, the printing and publishing of books, CDs, and DVDs to get this message out, Fresh Oil Fellowship, a ministerial organization for the encouragement of five-fold ministers who desire to flow with the Word and the Spirit, TV and other media broadcasts, that reach various parts of the world. Our Jesus the Healer television broadcast is currently on six different networks, potentially reaching 329 million households. Benefits you receive from partnership include a 20% discount on all Dufresne Ministries products, a monthly partner letter from Nancy Dufresne, consistent ministry updates and communication, and the prayer of agreement with our partners. Be a part in carrying out the vision. Pray about becoming a legacy partner today. For more information, go to our website at defrainministries.org.